So this is pretty mental. I think that this is such a stacked race for so late in the year. I'm not 100% sure why. Um, prize money. Yeah, could be. What's the prize money on yours? Not a lot. I could hazard some guesses. Nah, it's just last race of the season, isn't it? Yeah. So everyone's looking to get a European race in before ending the season. I'm going to reel off a few of the start list uh, candidates or athletes that are within Portugal cash guys and who I'll be racing in my first Ironman ever. The weather has completely turned. It is now Baltic. But got two hours to do. This is a week out. And uh, I can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> to drag them out with me. Five minutes in, it's not looking good. Go straight into it, I'm going to ream it off from the laptop here. Patrick Langer, so you know, second in Nice. Uh, Jan Strachman came third in the 70.3 Worlds. Uh, Peter Himmerich won a PTO Open race this year. Um, Clement Mignon, he broke away with uh, Sam Laidlow on the bike in Nice. Uh, Thor Benedict Madsen, unreal cyclist. I think he came eighth in Worlds, but yeah, he, he absolutely destroyed the field in Lanzarote to uh, ride through. Uh, Josh Amberger, like household name, leads out in Kona almost every single year when he's there. Uh, Cam Worth, uh, Bart Alnutz, like, I mean, yeah, another household name. He's going to be sick. Um, Antonio Benito Lopez, another household name. Uh, Mickey Tango, yeah, I mean, I'm not glad he crashed out in Worlds, but he would have been another one that was well up there. Um, he crashed right in front of me at 70.3 Worlds and obviously felt bad for him, but yeah, that kind of knocked him out of the race and probably would have been someone who was up in that front pack. So yeah, another um, heavy hitter. And then I'm seeded 12th. So I'm currently ranked about 60th in the world and I'm 12th on the list, which means that there's 11 people in that top 60 that are racing. I mean, that's good for points, but at the same time, it's gonna make the race ridiculously hard. How are you feeling? Huh? I think it was a step on that point. This is a tough angle. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you completely as well. Looking good? Yeah, going all right. How long? Uh, I'm 45 minutes. But kind of just part it a little bit just to keep it interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Josh, Josh, can you go faster, please? I want to have one hand, there's not much I can do. There's a fair few people lower down that are also very, very good athletes that I'll have to watch out for. But at the same time, I'm just going to have to race my own race because whilst I want to go and be competitive and be at the front of the race for as long as possible, I have my limitations and they're primarily the fact that I haven't done an Ironman before and I don't really know what to expect and how my body's going to react to it. So. I'll go with it for as long as possible, but at the same time, when I get to that run, yes, I would love to run under three hours. Oh. Almost done. Almost done, yeah. A little bit left. And then home. Mm -hmm. All done. Ready? To put my feet up for the week and then just recover for the race now but yeah it's all the hard work done time to uh chill out but is it realistic i'm not 100 percent sure i think that i've done the training that suggests i might be able to but whether or not that actually comes to fruition within the race i have no idea so yeah i think that it's more of a case of go experience, see what it's like, um, and try and be as far forward as I can be for as long as possible. I mean, there's some disgustingly good swimmers in there, so whether or not I'm able to hold on to the front of the race, even in the swim, is yet to be seen. Um, so I'll give it my best, don't get me wrong. So yeah, do follow along, and hopefully you'll see me there on the track or whatever. This is a terrible place to video, because it's where we meet and it's really noisy, but just off out for our four hour ride the week before. Cash guys, Portugal, um, but everyone's running late. I'm fucking eating. <laughs> Every time. <laughs>
Why are the races so stacked at the moment, do you reckon? Prize money. Prize money? Yeah, could be. Definitely. What's the prize money on yours? Not a lot. Is it not? So people have just turned up to fuck you up, basically? Yeah. Nah, it's just the last race of the season, isn't it? Yeah. So everyone's looking to get a European race in before ending the season. Yeah. What's, um, what's with cash guys then? Same thing. People are looking to qualify, aren't they? Qualify for Kona. Really qualify, qualification on. Yeah. But challenge you doing three races on three weekends. Yeah. So Barcelona, Gira, and then this one in France. Jesus. So who's going to win your race? Um. Don't say you. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many to choose from. What? Go, reel off a few, quick. Well, you got. Um, Rico Borga, the one seven country world. Yeah. Freddy Funk, who came second. Mika Nu, who was, he just won Augusta and he smashed Lionel Sanders and those boys. Then you've got um, the current world champ at ITU, so you've got Dorian Connick. <laughs> and I think Martin Van Riel's showing up as well. Doesn't he hold the 70.3 world record? He does, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget yesterday. Subpar field then. So, Who's going to win out of that? Van Riel. Uh, oh, cool. I probably think it's 70.3 world champ. 70.3 world champ, Rico Bogan. Yeah. On the fastest bike, allegedly. Yeah, I mean, they better drop me, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> After my run session yesterday. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get around, to be honest, and if I can uh, mix it up, then I will. But yeah, pretty solid field, too. Classic Josh Lewis and the play and everything. But this, the field is so strong and it's not just strong on like swim bike, it's strong on swim bike and run and the whole race dynamic could be very interesting essentially because you've got people who are going to be coming from potentially behind but could also stick in the front pack of the swimmers like Cam Worth was so close to sticking in the front pack in Nice so he could potentially be one that stays in the front pack and then rides off into the distance but at the same time you have people there like Patrick Langer who would also potentially be in the front pack especially with the swim if he stays with the uh, bikes or stays with the front pack on the bike he's just going to run off into the distance and put 20 or 30 minutes into me on the run so so yeah I Look, I'm not expecting a good result in that respect. I think that I'm going to try and execute my plan as best as possible and see where that lands me. Um, if I can run under three hours, I mean, the fastest I think I could run is a 250. Um, if I can run a 250, it's kind of a case of where does that put me in comparison to everyone else? And it just depends on the day, doesn't it? Because in an Ironman, anything can happen. I could end up walking. It's my first one. I could go too hard on the bike, not fuel enough, and end up walk walking. So we'll see. I think it's a case of execution of what I think I can do, not get carried away, be on top of fueling and nutrition, and kind of see where that lands me. I wish I could give you a little bit more of a kind of, I would love to get in the top 10 or 20, but the start list is about 60 people long. 68 people on the start list for the pros. We'll see how it goes, but do follow along. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll give you a race debrief in the next video or two. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Hit like, follow along on the tracker as well. I don't know, I'm number 12, I think. Uh, and leave me a comment below if you have any advice because I'm all ears at the moment because yeah, it's my first one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.